Another day, another bearish news narrative that plagues the entire media. This time, it's the US debt ceiling crisis. Just last week, we had the banking collapse. The week before was another bearish news event. And each time, the market continues to overcome this. So is this time different? Is this going to be that final pin that pops the bubble? The bubble that is the most hated rally in history. Let's find out in today's video. We've got an update for BTC, a massive one as the US dollar continues to climb. The S&P 500 drops off a short-term cliff. We've also got the NASDAQ, which is pumping up nice and hard right now. So as usual, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Top of the video description are our channel sponsors, triple sign up bonuses with SwiftX, more on that later. But the main thing that we want to cover today is what is going on in the markets as we lead through this May period of basically a churny, choppy sideways market. Yet the massive bearish news narratives continue to plague us. So let's start with BTC and what's been going on over the last couple of days. Well, the last couple of days, Bitcoin's had a move to the upside on Tuesday and Wednesday and moved to the downside. So we're basically where we began about 12 to 13 days ago. This is where the market dropped to on Friday the 12th. Overall, in terms of the macro view here, we still have the underside of 25,300. So this is that double top level that can act as support and then all the way down to 23,900. This is the post that I had up on Twitter. So if you're not following, make sure you do that. The links are in the video description. Use those ones uh, so you don't get scammed out there by all the other accounts that are trying to impersonate my account. I only have one Instagram, one Twitter, one YouTube, no Telegram groups. All right, guys. So Back to BTC, the bears are getting excited. We've seen a 3.2% drop in the last 24 hours. The markets are nearly closed. By the time you see this, they'll be closed. So this is actually going to be most likely one of the lowest closes we have seen since March, basically since the market pumped up after the mega banking crisis collapsed. You know, it got all the way down to $19,500. And though then the market jumped pretty heavily, really fast from that point, uh, closing at around 24 to 25,000. So this is basically the lowest close that we have seen since that time, coming somewhere in, in the low $26,000. But to the downside, there is still plenty of support. So going to this particular tweet that I posted back on the 10th of May. So just over two weeks ago now, this is the same analysis. Nothing has changed in this period. When we're looking at the macro, anything can happen short term, day to day, a few percent up, few percent down, that doesn't matter. So in terms of the macro picture, the macro picture is still intact because the major things have broken and they haven't broken down. So the major moves have broken to the upside, they haven't broken to the downside. So the macro is still intact to the upside. Uh, looking at some unfinished business between 24,000 and 27,000. So that's basically this area of price range. It's just above those tops at 25, but you can see just a little further down. These levels, that's at 24. These levels are around 24. Uh, more specifically, it's around 23,900, but for a nice round number, we're using 24,000. So that's basically this level right here on the chart. And obviously you can see to this point, that's 26 and a half and somewhere around these lows is 27. So you can see that the market has some un unfinished business in this mid zone to overcome. We jumped up quite quickly and on pretty strong volume. So if we can test that, put in another solid foundation, that allows us to start moving back to the upside in the months ahead. And remember, we're not expecting May to be some big blow off top month. It hasn't done that in the past. What has happened in the past is almost exactly what is happening right now. Not in terms of the extent of the move, but that the market is actually just bearish, bearish in May. We've all heard the saying before, sell in May, go away. But the main thing I wanna have a look at here is this little run to the downside early in May, and now we're sort of seeing a sideways period and then another day down. We haven't broken this low yet, maybe we don't, let's wait and see. We've had a little bit of volume come back into the market on this move down, but the main thing here is that we had a top around April, another lower top in late April and early May, we had a downside move here, and now the market is trying to figure out whether we need to go and test to see if the demand comes in at lower prices, before it can start to move up, or if we're going to get heaps more supply come in, which pushes the market further down. Note 
this period. April top, move to the downside. Lower top, move to the downside. Go back a year. We had a late March, early April top. Then we had another top here. Similar-ish sort of timing, but the main thing here is we had a move to the downside almost day to day in May that Bitcoin did in 2022 within the bear market. This time around, it's been nowhere near as severe. Look what happened. Market went sideways again, little move to the upside, and then collapsed into June. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get a collapse into June because you can see just how different the move, the extent of the move is, but in terms of the timing, relatively the same. That's why we focus here on timing because time and time again, <laughs> the timing basically works out. So as long as we're in tune with the timing, then we can have a better idea of what we could expect next. Looking to June, you can see the market heads down, but in this case, maybe it's not going to be this mega collapse. We haven't seen a mega collapse in May. We haven't seen a mega collapse in April like we saw in 2022 and like we saw in 2021 during the bull market. It's almost exactly the same. The top was the exact same day. The 14th of April, all-time high. What we just saw in this little peak now, 14th of April. Exactly two years was the top that we just saw in the market. This was that period that you may have remembered from the channel that I was calling for downside action. I was calling for the market to fall. I didn't know the extent of the fall, but in terms of the timing, and the structure, it was looking extremely weak at that time. I, I said this on many other channels, you guys might have uh, noted that was an extremely bullish time. And of course, I was called a fool because, I mean, people don't want to hear that the market is weak at the peaks when they just get in. The idea here is that we just want to look at the timing. We can see this moving forward. So we've got a, uh, a two-year repeat here into those May lows. Now we're a few days on from that and the market is, again, trending sideways. What happened into June had another little move to the downside, but the market is basically in the same trading range. So it had a move up and then a move within that same zone, July again. And then of course, coming into the late part of summer, uh, the market starts to move away. So we might have another couple of months of just figuring out what we want to do. We'll have a look at where that trading range comes in, but essentially looks like the market is doing a similar sort of repeat, but not to the extent of the move, just to the timing of the dates and the cycle itself. So we have this mega pump that's going on in the stock market and it's not shifting over into the crypto markets just yet, or at least not into Bitcoin. But of course, Bitcoin has been going up for the last five to six months. We've just had a bit of a time to pause. Now, if you're wondering what I'm looking at doing here, I've specifically laid it out, is this the time to be buying? Just like I talked about this area here, the buying opportunities, the mega buying opportunity at these lows and the other buying opportunities underneath that $22,000 level. So pay attention to these sorts of things here. If you don't have a position yet or you're unsure about the markets, there is enough people out there talking about the bearish picture. But of course, they were talking about the bear picture all the way down. They continue to talk about the bear picture on the way down. And then again, as the market pumps up, they're still just trying to talk about the bear picture to the way down. The market has gone up 100%. Don't miss out on what the opportunities are in the market based on all of these bearish narratives that continue to circulate and we get a new one every single week. If you're unsure about that, go to Twitter uh, and check out this link, uh, this uh, tweet that I have in the top of my Twitter. I have gone through and laid out all of the bearish narratives that continue to come up week after week. So if you're sort of not getting that right feel about the market or you're unsure because a lot of these things happen so quickly, you can go back and have a look at all of the bearish events that we have seen over the last two years and start to piece this puzzle together. So piecing it together, we have the US dollar, the same sort of bearish and bullish narratives happen at the exact peaks of the market. Now I've covered this plenty of times before, we had ultra bearish news on the USD and the market is now pumped from that point. I hope you guys are seeing this play out in real time as we talk about it on the channel. To, to get this somewhat accurate isn't the most easiest game, especially because you're going against the herd and you see it in the comments. People are saying how bad the economy is and you, you have to expect further downside, et cetera, et cetera, in the stock markets. That is more likely not going to happen based on some of the other data I have coming up in just a moment. But just as a reminder here, the US dollar probably seeing some more upside because of how bearish the news was coming into a double bottom and now we're seeing the market move to the upside. So this pressure to the upside on the US dollar 
it's probably having a little bit of an impact on the Bitcoin price. Bitcoin hasn't done so badly in this period that the US dollar has been going up over the last couple of weeks. You can see for Bitcoin over the last couple of weeks, it's basically been in this trending channel between 28 and uh, about 26K. So not doing too bad considering the move to the upside on the US dollar. And remember back in September of 2022, basically got this one to the day. The news was so ultra bullish on the US dollar, but our technicals were telling us otherwise, getting these lower tops coming into the market. And basically specifically at that top, it was just too bullish to be true. Everyone was talking about the bullishness here and the collapse of the other currencies coming back to parity in some cases. So never let the news narratives, the media narratives, anything that is mostly going on out there, never let that sway your own analysis when you're checking the charts. Speaking of checking the charts, in this case, we can see that the markets are climbing higher. We can see that the economies are climbing higher. So this is April 2023, uh, state coincidence indexes, three month change. Another great post here from Seth getting this data here. So basically this is showing the states of the US through April actually increasing. So this is an increase in the states themselves. So basically in what they are putting out there, what they're producing. The only state that went backwards was Alaska. It went backwards by 0.1 to 0.5. Every other state that you can see here in darker green and lighter green, they've all done at least 0.6 or greater than 1%. That's the majority of these states are expanding. Three more months of expansion at least. So these calls of the fear of the recession and uh, contraction in the markets is just not happening. Moving over to the markets now and in the short term, we've seen a couple of days down, but in the longer term, these markets have been rallying since October and pushing to fresh highs, which I'll get to in just a moment with some pretty significant data of what we can expect over the next 12 months on the data. In terms of the VIX, you know, we cover this looking at significant tops on the VIX coinciding with significant lows on the S&P. So we got the uh, the lows back here. That's June, October, December, March. We go back to the VIX. You can look through these. There's your June. There is your September, October. There is your March. And then through this period here, we have another little peak here in December. So what are we seeing now? Well, we're seeing another little peak to the upside, but it's nowhere near as severe as what we saw through 2022. And you take a scroll out, even 2022 wasn't really as severe as any of the other times that we saw in history. So this is still on the downtrend and that's what you want to see on the VIX for an uptrend to continue on the S&P in a macro sense. Of course, in the short term, we are going to see some tests because we have gone on a significant rally here to the upside, breaking past 50% or testing past the 50% level, testing previous highs, getting into fresh high ground that we haven't seen since August of 2022. There has to be a pullback on these moves because most are still uncertain about whether we're going up or down. And of course, the macro bears are still out there in great force. But unfortunately for those guys, the markets just keep putting in higher and higher lows. So keep a lookout for the 4,000 level on the SPX and for the ES1. So this is our uh, futures market here. You can see that we even had a pretty significant bounce back this morning with NVIDIA pumping on the back of some pretty hefty news of their uh, earnings reports. So this is NVIDIA putting in a low in October, a higher low in December, another mega higher low in March. This thing's nearly at all time highs, but in after hours trading, it has pumped to somewhere around 380 to 400 bucks. So a brand new all time high for NVIDIA. And of course, this is leading the NASDAQ up into fresh high prices as well. We saw it just coming down the last couple of days, testing the 50% level, testing these previous tops and has now closed a little higher. Does this mean the downside short term is over? Not yet. We want to see those tops get broken out at around 14,000 points. But a little more on that later. I just want to have a look at this particular data here. This stuff is absolutely damning evidence of a buy the dip opportunity. This is just the pure data. This is the data looking at uh, nearly 100 years of history showing the full instances where there have been buy the dip opportunities. Basically, if the market has gone down 2% in five days, and then recovered that 2% within the next 20 days, it's a buy the dip opportunity. And what this has shown 
over the last 95 years is that the annualized return has been extremely phenomenal to be buying those dips. There's only been a handful of times that this has not been a good case. And even in those times, it was so muted, negative 2%, negative 3%, negative 1%, negative 5%. Massive, massive gains here. Single digits up to triple digits. This data comes from Fundstrat and put out by Bloomberg and notified to me by Seth. So a great Twitter account to go and follow. If you're not following him, I suggest you do. Go and check him out on Twitter. So basically, if we're looking at each of these opportunities, then the buy the dip has far outweighed not buying the dip. It's the best opportunity to be getting those dips, especially in the S&P, going back to 1928. I mean, the data just doesn't lie. And if you enjoy the data and the macro cycle analysis, you know what to do. Hit that like and subscribe to the channel. This is your home macro cycle analysis across stock markets, Bitcoin, crypto, and of course, the biggest of them all, the real estate cycle, which is set to continue up as crazy as it sounds with how the economic conditions are up for the next couple of years. So don't go anywhere, hit those buttons down below. And then at the top of the video description here, we have a limited time bonus for the Aussies, triple sign up bonuses with SwiftX until Friday. So you basically have two days left to get on board with that. Otherwise, check out Bybit and BitGet for huge sign up bonuses here, nearly $38,000 worth. Of course, there's gonna be some trading involved. So uh, just make sure you have your plans in play before you start to get on board with those uh, exchanges. Another trend that the NASDAQ has been following since this low in October, is the upwards trend here. Well, the upwards bias. And of course, we're looking to the bull case at the moment because that's what the market is telling us. The market is telling us it's going up. Why on earth would we be continuing to try and short something on a longer term basis if the market keeps going up? Short term, yes, the bulls can get overheated like we've talked about many times before. Uh, just uh, last week, actually, we saw this thing break through there is a bit of overheating here, so it needs to come back and retest. This is healthy for the market. So we're seeing some good, healthy moves so we don't get too far too quickly and too far ahead of ourselves as well. The good news for this is it looks like we're continuing to consolidate on the upper side of the channel. You can see this is basically this move down into the low and it is encapsulating a lot of these lows to the upside. And only recently through April and May uh, for the NASDAQ, have we been consolidating in the upper half of the channel? So this is looking, again, pretty strong. What we wouldn't want to see is the market break down and start to consolidate in the bottom half of the channel. That would then lead us to some potentially lower prices and testing of the previous support levels because maybe we've gotten too far too, uh, too quickly ahead of ourselves. But for now, it looks like we're still testing in this upper band uh, even to the downside, as long as we keep putting in higher lows, looking back at the horizontal support levels, then we're basically in the clear. We are just buying time until this market can consolidate enough to attempt another push to the upside. And now for that damning evidence for more upside on the NASDAQ. This thing has not failed. There is 100% accuracy. You know, I've talked about, I don't often need to have 100% percent accuracy. Anything over 80% is typically pretty good. But in this case, 12 months, NASDAQ 100 return, so the top 100 in the NASDAQ, has never failed. So what are we looking at here? NASDAQ 100, new 52-week highs after more than six months without one. So just like last week, we covered there were new 52-week highs for the NASDAQ. So you look back 52 weeks. So that's a new 52 week high after six months. So we have here after more than six months without one. So here was your highest price. This is longer than six months. And now we find ourselves hitting a new fresh 52 week high after not having one for six months. Now, what the data says is that in 100% of cases over the next 12 months, the market has a positive return, meaning we're going to see a positive return from the NASDAQ. This is completely against what the media is saying, what the macro bears are saying, not talking about the short term because there are some great short term opportunities. If you are trading on a minute charts or the hourly charts, maybe even a end of day chart, you've got some good 
moves to the downside within this is a particular day here. So you have some good moves to the downside if you're a short-term trader. But for the macro guys, the guys expecting a financial collapse on the back of all of these bearish narratives, the data is showing that at the end of 12 months, every time we've seen this since 1989, 100% of the time, the NASDAQ has been positive. Six months later from this breakout, so we are a breakout in May. So six months later, end of November, 85.7% of the time, it's seen a positive return. Only two times here, there was not a positive return. So 5% in uh, 2004, which ended up going on to higher prices as well. And in 1990, negative 22. So a significant down year for the 1990. Could it happen again? Yeah. Well, the data says 14% of the time it could. But if you want to sway the probabilities on in, in your favor, which is what we're here to do in investing, because we don't know for sure what's going to happen, although the data says 100%, we don't know for sure, uh, you want the probabilities to be in your favor, especially if you're on the macro picture here. So 85%, I don't want to bet against that. In three months time, again, 85%, it was only these two years that it had a negative one and a negative 24. So the market was climbing up in that next part of the uh, of the next three months. So the first three months negative and then it started to climb up. And then by the end of that year, it was in the positive. And then if we go back to just one month from now, so uh, one month from the middle of May, middle of June, 78% of the time. So basically eight out of 10 times, it's been a positive return the next month from this period. And when it wasn't, 2019, it was basically negative 2%, 1990, 1.7 and 89, 3.5. So barely anything to be worried about in those cases. So you tell me, if you're a macro bear in the market and you see the economy going to crap and people can't afford their food and their electricity bills and their car payments and their rental payments and going on their holidays and, and whatever else that the media continues to uh, throw our way, like you can see from my market climbs wall of worry posts here, any of these bearish narratives, narratives which continue to come up. And don't forget, next month we have the the interest rate uh, meeting with the Fed as well. Go and check that out whenever that comes. There's going to be something new, some other bearish narrative. You tell me if you want to bet against these numbers, by all means, what do you think is going to happen in the next one month, three months, six, 12 months from now? Do you think we're going to see higher prices for the S&P, for the NASDAQ and for BTC? Or do you think we're going to take out the 2022 lows? That's the comment, the question for you, top of the video description. Like, subscribe, you know the details, top of the video description there. I'll be back with you for another update as we are home of the macro cycle analysis, telling you the stuff you need to hear when for some reason or another, no one else is. All right, guys, I'll see you at the next video. Until then, take care. Peace out.